Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we will continue to talk more about atomic structure. But our main focus is going to be how we can change the atomic structure by changing the number of different atomic particles. And which particles are those? Those are protons, electrons and neutrons. So let's begin first with neutrons. What happens when the number of neutrons in an atom are changed? It results in a substance which we call as an isotope. Now, how do you describe an isotope? Isotopes are just like twins or triplets. So they have some similarities, but they are not exactly same identities. So same way, the isotopes of an element will have certain similarities, but they will differ in certain aspects. The example which we have here is carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-14. That tells you one more thing. Number 12, 13 and 14 indicates that is the atomic mass number for that particular isotopic atom. That means the isotope differ in number of neutrons and also atomic mass number. Now isotopes will be chemically somewhat similar and what we always write in front of them is their mass number. So that is their main identity. So carbon 12 means an isotope of carbon with mass number 12. This is carbon 13 which is isotope of carbon with mass number 13 and of course carbon 14 has mass number 14. So all those are isotopes. Let's move on to electrons now. What happens when number of electrons is changed? As you know, electrons have negative charge. So when electron number is changed, it results in formation of ions. And how do you define an ion? Ion, those are particles which will not have same number of protons and electrons. It will be different number for both electrons and protons and that will result into an electrical charge which could be of course positive or it could be negative. Now there are two different types of ions. One of them is called as cations and other is called as anions. How do we differentiate both of those? Cations have positive charge. And how are they formed? They are formed when electrons are lost. Now, in an atom, we have protons equal to electrons. If some of the electrons are lost, guess what? Who is in majority? Protons are in majority. So when that happens, obviously, the positive charge of protons, that becomes a major charge. So therefore, there is an excess positive charge and cations are positive. Anions are negative charge and how are they formed? When electrons are gained, what we get is anions. Now, let's find out how they end up getting negative charge. The number of protons and electrons is equal in an atom. But now, for anion, we are going to have more electrons or in other words, we can say protons will be now in minority. So less number of protons and more electrons. So it ends up having total net charge negative. So you just found out what happens when we change the number of electrons. Here is an easy way to find out how the ions get their charges. This is a number line with right here zero and zero corresponds to an atom because atom has zero charge. And now what happens when it gains the electron? When electrons are gained, it becomes negative and 
corresponding to how many electrons are gained, the charge will be negative 1, negative 2 or negative 3. So, one electron gain, it will be negative 1, two electron gain will be negative 2 and when it gains three electron, that will be negative 3. What happens when electrons are lost? We end up getting a positive ion and same way, if it loses one electron, we get positive 1. If it loses 2, we get positive 2. And if it loses 3, we get positive 3. And just to remind you again, a positive ion is called as cations and a negative ion is called as an anion. Now, how do we represent an ion? If it is a cation, that means we have positive charge and if it is anion, as you know, it will be negative charge. We write the symbol for the atom and then if it's an ion, we simply put positive or negative charge. And where do we put that? On the right hand side top corner. So let's say we have calcium ion which is a cation and it has a positive 2 charge. The symbol for calcium is Ca and the cation has positive 2 charge. So we put on the right hand side top corner positive 2. Let's take an example of a negative ion. From chlorine we end up getting chloride ion. How do we write that? The symbol for chlorine is Cl. When it's chloride ion, it's a negative ion and the charge is negative 1. So on the right hand side, top corner, we put negative 1 there. So is that simple? Let's figure out this unknown element in the problem. This element has 20 protons and 18 electrons. And our job is to find out which element is that and how much is the ionic charge. Let's list what we have. Number of protons is 20 and number of electrons is 80. If you remember, number of protons is equal to the atomic number. That means atomic number for this element is also 20. And how do we find out atomic number? That's listed on the periodic table. So look around to find out where is atomic number and right here we can see calcium which has got 20 as the atomic number. So the element is calcium. Now how do you find out the charge on that ion? The charge is equal to number of protons minus number of electrons. So it's 20 minus 18 which will be equal to 2. So we don't write just 2, we write positive 2 as the charge. So that is an example of calcium ion which of course is a cation. Positive ion is called as a cation. Let's look at one more example. Here is sulfide ion and the charge is given to you as negative 2. The question is how many protons and electrons does the ion have? Sulfide starts with sulfur so you have the symbol as sulfur. The charge is given to you as negative 2. So that's what we have S minus 2 and since the charge is negative you know that is an anion. Now charge is always equal to number of protons minus number of electrons. How do we know the number of protons? We are going to find out where sulfur is. Sulfur is right over here and then you find out what is the atomic number for sulfur. So number of protons is 16. So 16 minus the electron number is going to give me negative 2 as the charge. You can rearrange the equation and find out number of electrons and that will come out to be 16 plus 2 which is 18. Now let's find out what happens when there is change in number of protons. When proton number is changed, it results in formation of completely different new element. 
and these changes occur when there are nuclear reactions and those reactions by the way are not that common at all during these reactions there are various particles which are emitted or captured to form what to form these different new elements and i want you to remember that when these nuclear reactions takes place it is associated with a large amount of energy so mainly those radiations are gamma radiations and we'll talk about the reactions later on so this is to summarize the information about atomic particles as you know we have three different particles proton electron and neutron and these are the symbols for each one of those proton is p with positive charge e electron for negative charge and n is for neutron with no charge where is the location for each of those protons are in nucleus and so are the neutrons and electrons are the one which are revolving around the nucleus approximate roughly mass the proton mass is 1 amu and so is the mass for neutron about 1 amu electron mass is negligible and we actually can imagine that's equal to zero the charge on proton is positive one then the charge on electron is negative one and neutron has no charge and what happens when we change these particles when number of protons is changed it results in formation of an isotope when number of electrons is changed it results in formation of ions cations and anions and when number of neutrons is changed it results in formation of a totally different new element i hope you guys enjoyed the video i will see you in next video until then bye bye